Let's look at creating interesting isometric designs on the iPad. And as I say, creating interesting text and objects in Affinity Designer. Now this is on the iPad. It's equally possible on the desktop of course, but we're using the iPad for this exercise. So open your Vector Canvas artboard. We can go pure vector for this. No pixels. So in fact you can make it any size you like. We will use an artboard and just make it large enough to work with some bold text. You can see I've got a couple of little pan colour panels I use there, but we won't use them in this exercise. Just concentrate on the artboard. Type in a suitable word using a nice bold font. I've used Payton 1 in this exercise, but anything like that will do. And of course you can use any word you like. Now select the document menu, select grid and enable isometric editing. That's how you can get the text to lay on its side like you see there. Now you can see down the bottom I'm pointing the arrow at isometric editing. This context toolbar comes on when you select the document menu, locate grid and click on grid. And then you'll see the context menu toolbar at the bottom and select the grid mode of isometric. Fairly straightforward. Once you see it you'll know what you're looking at. Select the command menu next and set up the plane editing as shown. You enable planes, top plane and edit in plane. Don't worry about winding. I think that comes on by default. But it's alright, doesn't seem to affect anything. Now, next step. Turn on Show Grid so you can see what you're doing. With Isometric enabled, and although it doesn't show down the bottom context toolbar anymore, it is still enabled. You can now adjust the text to the plane. You can see in the transform section there, and that looks like a little floppy disk on the side there. Set the rotation to 30 degrees and the shear to 30 degrees. That turns it on its side and it will follow those grid lines nicely. Line the text up on the grid as you see, because you probably haven't got the word canyon in this case exactly aligned with that grid yet. But you can align it, just move it around with the uh, move tool until you get it aligned on there. You might even have to stretch it a little bit to get it to fit between the, what have we got there, one, two, three grid lines. That's alright, it won't affect anything. Line it up, make it look nice and neat. Now, add a grey rectangle. This is a new layer, adjusted into places shown. And this time with 30 degrees rotation and minus 30 shear. That turns it, turns it on its side. Don't take too long with this step and if you mess it up just use your undo key and start again. It's fairly straightforward. Draw a grey rectangle on the bottom of the screen will do, on the bottom of the artboard, then flip it by 30 degrees rotation and minus 30 shear. Then again drag it around so you've got it lined up below the word canyon. Just like that. Now set the rectangle colour to no colour and adjust the size and position as shown. There's a little room for adjustment error here. And you can see I've got the line going through the C-A-N-Y-O-N. You can see where I've dragged it up, moved it a little bit into position. As near as you want to the letters you want. There's plenty of room for adjustment there. Check that the isometric options are still set OK. They should be. You shouldn't have changed them, but sometimes these things happen. Now once they're set, they actually stay set. Now copy the blank rectangle, that one you just moved, and paste it immediately to maintain alignment. So you select copy and select paste. You can see them up there just below the red or, or the red line goes through them. Copy and paste. 
So copy the rectangle and paste. And it will paste it back in place. And it won't look like there's a, actually a second one there, but there is. Adjust the size to show one segment of the first letter. In other words, select that item that you just copied and pasted. Not the first rectangle, but the second one, the copy you made. If you're not sure, have a look in your layers panel. Now adjust the width of that, drag it back to make it the size of the first letter leg. Now you can see I've got all of the bottom of the C um, covered there, but you, I only really want the width of the letter C, the body of the C. So I'll drag that back in a moment. The width of the leg, not the width of the letter. Now there we go, you can see it there, the first one. Repeat the process for each letter. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and so on up the line. I think there's maybe nine of them there. And that's a, a fiddly little job, but it's interesting. And finding those letter legs can send you cross-eyed. <laughs> uh, my apologies to anybody who is already cross-eyed. You can always come back to edit any that don't sit accurately. Take your time. You'll see that you have a new layer for each letter segment. You can see them over the right hand side there, all in layers. Select all of these layers and set the colour to grey, not the last layer note. That's the word canyon sitting on there and there's a layer just there. So you want that all in grey those vertical um, lines that you just created. Just like that. Reselect the first blank rectangle and then sec select transform and move to the front. And there we go. Set the original blank layer color to red. And now you can see what it's done because the red is blocking out the lower half of the letters. Hmm, curious. How are we going to solve this problem? Select all the letter extensions. In other words, select all the layers. That will give you all the, all the leg extensions selected and adjust them. And I've dragged them down a little bit so they're clear of the red background. That's just what you want. Not, not a long way, but just enough so that you can see that they are there. Copy and paste the red coloured red rectangle and drag it so it lines up with the bottom of the original. It's fairly straightforward. You'll probably have to select it in the layers panel. That's alright. And you can see I've dragged the copy down and lined it up exactly along the bottom of the original red rectangle. And because it's a copy of the original it's still there with the grey ones sort of showing on top of it. That's just how you want it. Further adjust the size of the new red rectangle so it fills the canvas as shown. So drag the edges out, fill up the canvas. Change the grey letter extensions to white. In other words, select all those little extensions you made, change their colour to white. Hmm, still looking curious. Copy the large red area that you just made and paste it in place. So copy and paste, then drag it to the top and adjust it to fill the space. Now why you're dragging and copying that one is because it's at the same angle, the same perspective if you like, as everything else there. So you just have to drag it up towards the top and it will line up nicely. And you can see it's nicely lined up there. You can see the bounding box. Not a problem. But we still got some little gaps at the left and the right. Well, we're coming to that. Drag out the original red background to fill the remaining spaces. Adjust the ends to align neatly. And you can see it's not quite in line with the top and bottom red rectangles there, but you just drag them out. The top one is but the bottom left one, where the red arrow is, is not quite in line yet. But just drag it out. There's no real reason otherwise, other than it lines it up and it looks neat. Now again in Transform. Select the topmost large red shape 
that covers the black lettering and tap move to the back. That's that big red shape you dragged up to the top. Make sure that's selected and tap move to the back in transform. That's that first one there. The red area is now behind the black lettering. Hmm, that's looking better. That's looking more like we want it. But it's still not quite, hmm, 3D. So select the lettering extension background, that's that first vertical plane that you made, which was originally grey, and then you change it to red. Now change it to a darker tone red, just like I've got there. You can see the lettering outlines are showing through there. That's fine. That's just what you want. You can see where everything is. Now, carefully adjust any misplaced lettering extensions and color areas by simply selecting them and adjusting them. And you can see it's slightly off there, but if I was to click in the white vertical there, it highlights it, puts the bounding box around it, and you can drag it into position or resize it, drag it to shape. So the C is OK. The A verticals need repositioning. The N, or the first one of the N, needs a little repositioning. The Y needs a little bit of repositioning, and so does the O. And the final N vertical needs repositioning. OK, that's all you have to do. It's a simple job. Almost done. Last checks. Yep, looking pretty good. Everything seems to be in place. And the lower parts of the letters are bleeding over the edge of the canyon. And that's what it looks like. All done. How cool is that? Now you have a new design option to add to your kit of tools. So enjoy. Thanks for watching.